Bethany, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. So we've been trying to make this happen for a little while. And you're one of my favorite people to speak to about life and real estate. You always just have every time we get the chance to speak, you have just like this amazing positivity just radiating from you. So Aww. this is a conversation I have been looking forward to. Um, for those who have not yet made your acquaintance, can you share a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, so I am a Nashville, Tennessee realtor. Um, I worked in the corporate world for about five years, and it was basically a corporate um, property management company that bought and sold and leased out um, uh, commercial spaces. And uh, I did that for five years while also having four children uh, during that time and learned a ton, grew, learned so much about business and corporation. Um, my husband and I were very married, uh, were married very young. Um, we've been married almost 13 years now. And he, uh, at the time, worked for the military. He was a private contractor uh, for a Navy SEAL uh, department. And um, we, so about four years ago, we, we were in Chicago at the time and we said, you know what, this isn't the kind of lifestyle that we want to have. And we just kind of woke up one day and we're like, what are we working for so hard? Um, let's move to Nashville. <laughs> and so about four years ago, we moved to Nashville. I thought I was going to lose my corporate job, um, but they wanted to keep me on. And so I moved my division here and traveled back and forth um, to Chicago a little bit. My husband uh, joined the police department here. And just about um, nine months ago, it, well, officially only about like a month and a half ago, but he's kind of been working with me on and off for the last nine months. Um, he also quit his job because uh, when I am kind of blotching the story, but uh, so I decided not to work for a corporate company anymore. I'm like, why am I doing this on the commercial side? I can go residential. I literally like just woke up one day, quit my job and I'm, and I just threw myself at it. My husband says my my personality is ready, fire, aim, and I just go. I um, and so I threw myself into it and it it's everything I worked for and prayed for. And just one day I woke up and it exploded and I needed help. So we had to make a really big decision of, should we hire another agent to come alongside of us or do we wanna keep it within the family? So my husband quit his job and is also now working with me. Oh my gosh, that's such a journey. and. Blood. I love that ready fire, like ready aim fire. Is that what you said? Yeah. I, I think that's because when I, when I think of you, Bethany, I think of someone who has extremely clear values and like, oh, and like, it. and, and it's evident in your social media, it's evident in what you put out there. And so I feel like when you have like super clear values like that, it's really easy to make those super big decisions or am I just totally projecting? Yeah, no. Um, so values is a huge one to us. Um, when we first got married, we put together a family mission statement uh, and it has been like our life bread from the beginning. And uh, we've gone to that mission statement and just gone, that, okay, this is the lifestyle we will want. I'm a visionary. Um, and so vision and direction is a very big thing for me. I love that. So when, when did you officially get into residential real estate full-time? How long ago was that? Uh, March of 2019. Okay. So like two and a half years ish, not yeah. even. Mm -hmm. How's it gone? Um, amazing. Um, so I, I'm sure it's the same everywhere, but here in Nashville, I mean, everybody you meet knows nine to 12 realtors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so when I got into it, people were like, oh, you're just another realtor, you know, <laughs> like, and I'm like, no, like, I'm not going to be just another realtor. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so I really just, I think confidence and just throwing myself into it. Um, but I always kind of had that in the back of my mind. There's so many realtors, like, you know, how can I differentiate myself? And uh, I just, it was really important for me to shadow other agents. Um, I had an amazing mentor. Um, I interviewed with a lot of different brokerages trying to figure out where I wanted to go, where I fit in. Um, and so my first year, I only did um, eight transactions. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't think that was very good because I think my goal was 20. Um, but, you know, there's so much more to real estate than just getting your license. And uh, it's real estate is one of the things I'm passionate about. It's not very structured. Like you, and once you get your license, if you don't have good resources and you're just thrown into it, it doesn't mean you're going to sell something. Yeah. Uh, and so, but I knew I could. <laughs> so I did only did eight deals last year. I forget, um, how many deals I did. I know it was over 50. I think it was 60 something. Um, and a lot of that too is because of the networking and different things that I've did working with different, different investors and stuff. And mm -hmm. so I do a lot of networking here, local networking, different things. COVID was kind of hard with that. Um, but I just try to get on different Facebook groups and just anything I could, I was just throwing myself out there. Um, and I, I learned really quickly that if real estate isn't your number one career and something that you want to do lifelong, there are so many like part-time agents. And I realized that I could do well in this because I wasn't just a part-time agent that just needed to do X amount of deals to make X amount of money for my family. I'm just not that type of personality. So I was like, I'm throwing myself into this um, and it's paid off. I have so many questions. This is so exciting for me. Okay. So recap really fast. You did nine deals the first year and then jumped way up to 50 or 60. And that was a lot from networking and just putting yourself out there and making new connections, like building your database, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So networking with other realtors, okay. um, locally or out of state. Uh, locally and out of, so out of state has really uh, actually been a big thing as of like the last four or five months mm -hmm. through Instagram, actually. Um, I've done a lot of uh, networking with other realtors and giving them a referral or referral to me. Um, and so, but a lot local um, stuff. I'm doing more outside now, um, now that I feel like I've got the local thing secured and I have my husband to like send him to things so I can go to other things. Uh, but yeah. Okay. I love that. So one of the things that we talk a lot about is understanding our, I guess some might know it as our unique selling proposition, but what makes you unique and why should somebody hire you over your competition? And so as a newer agent, you're out there networking. What was that conversation like? Like, how did you decide? And you kind of touched on it, just knowing that you're going to be a full-time as opposed to part-time agents. But I know there's there are way there, there are plenty of full-time agents that were your competition too. So how did you learn how to stand out and really build in that confidence with these contacts that you were making that you were like the perfect fit for them? Yeah. So, uh, one of the things I've learned from you and from listening to other things, um, when I was a newer agent too, I listened to a ton of podcasts, read a ton of articles and just kept educating myself. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I would go to these networking events, you know, everybody has questions or, you know, on Instagram or whatever. And um, it wasn't so much about me saying how I was different than other people. It was more about educating them and bringing value to uh, their lives, whether they were going to use it for themselves or bring it back to somebody else. And so one of the things that people tell me a lot is like, you can tell you're so passionate about this and you know so much about it and you just like light up and love it. Um, and so um, just talking to, talking to people and just like educating them and teaching them about real estate because so many people, I mean, it's one of the biggest purchases investments of their life, but they have no clue of the process. Um, and so, yeah, I think just bringing education and value to people's lives is, um, has been really big for me. I love that. And this might be kind of a tough question, but how is that different from just throwing information out there? Yeah. So I think uh, for me, like I don't just give information. I also give the backstory and the process behind, behind the information. Okay. So, so kind of listening to like their story and understanding how it's relevant to that context, I think. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I think that that's, that's what makes like the big difference when it, when I've found that it clicks, it's going mm -hmm. that extra mile to like, listen and understand. Yeah. Um, because it's easy just to like throw out things that are Googleable, right. but it sounds like you're doing way more than that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then just 
I think realizing people um, like are of value. And one of my biggest um, things is I, I don't want you to just to be seen as a transaction. I want you to be seen as a transformation of life that you're going to go through by working with me. It's not just you know, getting a paycheck at the end of the day, I want you to know everything that happened in this transaction. So when we go through it and you go through it, you can go tell your friends and family, like, I now know this about real estate. I know that about real estate. And so that you could almost handle the transaction on your own. I'm not scared of that. Um, so, yeah. I love that. So you, you mentioned social media, how is social media playing into how you're continuing to build this business three years in almost two and a half? Yeah. So social media is something I've always been passionate about. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned yet, but I also have four kids Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and businesses and a marriage. Um, and so uh, I've always wanted to do more with social media and I knew that I could, I know, I feel like I know how to use it. Um, I just have, did, wasn't consistent with it just because of all the other things I was trying to educate myself on and learn and stuff. And so I feel like I'm just now getting into actually growing my Instagram um, mm -hmm. like I know how to do. Uh, but now I'm so busy. I need, I need more help, honestly, is what it comes down to. Uh, but social media is huge. Uh, I at least get one lately in the last... I don't know, three to six months, at least, at least one like hot lead a month. And then, I mean a month, a week. And then sometimes it's three to five. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you do a lot of like video and reels and stuff. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of video, a lot of stories. Um, yeah. I want to do more lives. I've done a couple. Uh, I do want to do more videos. I have content created. I just need to put it out there. Um, but it's not just that. I've learned with Instagram that it's also about um, cultivating your um, community through a social media platform. Mm -hmm. And sorry, my dog's going to bark. Um, and so just uh, actually building some of the greatest relationships on Instagram and engaging with people. You don't, I, I'm, I, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big engager more than, like content right now. I feel like there's so much more content that's in my head that I can do, but engaging is really big as well. Do you have any kind of like a system between how often you're posting versus how often you're engaging? Or do you just try to do it like whenever you can? Like if you get the, that five minutes of downtime, you're whipping out the phone, you're just trying to yeah. talk to people. My husband drives me around. He's like my chauffeur. Um, so it's usually when I'm in the car um, that I'm engaging with people if I'm not on the phone or writing an offer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, I need to be better at time blocking. It's just so, so hard in this industry. Um, and I feel like that's somewhat of an excuse, uh, but it is hard because if I get a call to go show a $2 million home, like I'm going to go show it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but that is something that I have put as my goals for my 90 day vision plan. Oh, I love that from, from market authority. Yes. Is that not the best exercise? Just like it. side note, I, I was actually just working on mine too, because we're heading into Q3 and I'm like, oh, so many dreams. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's good to see it every day and remind yeah. yourself because you can get so busy and just forget. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So you're, you're building this empire of real estate, all of your transactions, you're utilizing social media, you brought hubby on. Tell me a little bit about how that transition has gone with um, bringing your husband into the mix um, mm -hmm. on the professional side. And yeah. how are you guys finding that transition? Because I'm also a husband and wife duo. I absolutely love it, but I know it's not for everybody. It seems like it might be for yeah. you though. Yeah. So uh, like I mentioned, our mission and vision statement that we had from when we first got married we always knew we were going to work together. Like that was always our plan. We always knew we were going to run some kind of company or have something like my husband and I are weird. Uh, we get along really well. <laughs> um, not every couple, you know, can work together, but our personalities work really, really well together. Um, so I feel really blessed with that. Uh, there is a transition there though, because of just how much I I've learned and how much more he has to learn. And I don't want to be seen as like his boss or like his mm -hmm. mom. 
Um, and so I've been very protective of that almost so too much because we just had a conversation last week. He, he's like, you're protecting me too much. Like, just stop. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I know, like, I'm sorry. I, I just need to throw you into the fire a little bit more because that's how you learn. I mean, failure, I'm, I'm not scared of failure. I think I'm more scared of other people failing because I don't, I feel like I would be the one that would have let them down, but it's not really me. Um, so there was a little bit of a transition there. There still is. He right now is learning that. So we do a lot. Um, I, we run an investment division as well. Mm -hmm. uh, not flip stuff, but mostly here is long-term rental. Uh, and so, cause I did investments and stuff with my corporate company and, um, I like spreadsheets. And so that's a big thing for me. So I've been teaching him more about the investment side. So he's helping me with the investment side so that I can work more on the personal side, but we still work hand in hand too on both things. So have you guys had to like divide up, um, specific tasks or is it more just like the organizations within the team that you're, that you're kind of splitting up? Um, tasks for sure. Uh, okay. learning what my strengths are and what his strengths are and, um, feeding off of those strengths, um, and, and, or the opposite effect of what's my weakness, what's his weakness. Okay. Let's, you know, implement something else and put in your strength there. Uh, that does take time. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like it's going to be an ever evolving, uh, thing, but I think we've gotten a pretty good handle on it for now. Can you share, um, do you feel comfortable sharing a little bit about like what you have found to be both of your respective strengths and weaknesses and how you kind of. Yeah. So yeah, my husband, um, once you get to know him, he's like, oh my gosh, he's such an amazing man. Um, I don't know what I would do without him. He, but, uh, socially he's not the greatest at first. Like once you get to know him, he's great, but socially you kind of intimidate him, intimidated by him. Cause he's just this buff over six foot tall, like, you know, man. And he, I mean, he has a military background in law enforcement, so he looks intimidating, but he's just like the sweetest soul. Um, and so, uh, I would say that networking and social stuff is definitely more me than him. And he's really good um, behind the behind the computer, looking at things, um, scoping houses. Uh, he's really good at talking with other agents. He's an amazing, he's so much more articulate than I am. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm more of the heart person and he's more of like the logical person. So we work those two together. Um, and yeah, he's really good at public speaking too. And so for our networking events and stuff, he always crushes it because he's, he's good at that kind of stuff. Like, like social skills, we're still working on. <laughs> Those can come in time. Those come yeah. with practice. I, that's so interesting. So Bryce and I were, were kind of similar where I was actually the introvert mm -hmm. and always second guessing myself in social situations. And it, it's taken me years to continue to learn to overcome that. And I still work on it <laughs> to this day. Um, and Bryce is like the social butterfly where he wants <laughs> to like go around, make all the friends. And I'm like, by the snack bar. <laughs> <laughs> go and get, get another like coffee or whatever. Um, yep. but, but when it comes to like the tinkering, that's where I really fell in love with it because like, I understood how much you can do in the back end of a business in terms of like the foundational structures that you build in. And that's like what I yep. fell in love with, but it's, yep. it, it's so helpful to like break down those different strengths and weaknesses and like assign the tasks to it. It's a game yes. changer, but it does evolve. Like you said. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm it's interested good. to see like where it is a year from now after you guys have like a full year under your belt, like how yeah. you continue to grow in your roles. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're the type that like all, always wants to be learning, always wants to be growing. Um, so we're always seeking out like we, when we can, we're always listening to YouTube or podcasts or reading articles and clubhouse, just networking with other people in clubhouse, like learning how they do it. Because like I said, everything just grew so fast. I don't think we were fully prepared for what we're dealing with right now, to be honest. Yeah. And um, so now it's like, okay, we really need to like hone in on more skills and more systems and back end things for sure.
Yeah. I mean, you did nine your first year, 50, 60 your second year. Do you know how many units you're on pace for in this, in your third full year? Um, so right now I'm ad- averaging 13 to like 17 closing a, a month. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so much work. And it's just you two, or do you have, do you have any other support stuff? So I have a transaction coordinator who okay. literally is my lifeline. She's amazing. Love her to death. And then um, I also have my mentor who I call on if I need help with and stuff as well. Um, we are in the process of trying to figuring out right now if we need uh, both a showing agent and an executive assistant because um, it's not sustainable. <laughs> I'm going to say a yes to both of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bringing on an executive assistant um, is is a really difficult thing because it's such an intimate relationship. Right. Um, and, and they have to really be like an extension of you. So that's I'm interested to see how that journey goes. But I think that when you guys do eventually pull the trigger on that, I think that that's going to make a world of a difference. Because with all of that work, how are you both managing family time with with your children you have four kids how are you how are you handling it honestly not well (laughs) I really Uh, I really appreciate your honesty Bethany it's hard to be vulnerable and and I'm sure that that probably like brought a sigh of relief from a lot of other women who are trying to do it all and it's you can't yeah no you can't and um we got it I went from corporate to this because of the flexibility um and being able to say no but the funny thing is is I can't say no to anything (laughs) um and I'm learning to get better at that uh because it will eventually kill me as my husband says um but so not very well we the one good thing that we have is that bringing on my husband he is a lot better at realizing where our ceiling is I'm not like I've never known I was an elite athlete So my pain tolerance is just so, so high. Mm -hmm. Um, And so as I've gotten older, I've had to realize where I'm at emotionally and physically. um, And that's been really hard for me. And then that trickles down to my children. Uh, And so we are trying to be more intentional, like with the time that we do have. So for example, um, during the 4th of July weekend, it was so busy. We had so many out of state clients here and different things. And so we had to work, you know, really hard that weekend. And so we made a promise to the kids of, because, you know, all the other families were doing barbecues and, you know, and we're like, you know, mommy and daddy are building a business. They came with us. So they're seeing, they're seeing this hard work and the payoff Mm -hmm. of it. And so we said, you know, if you help us this weekend on Monday and Tuesday, we'll take you and we'll do a night away just as a family and we'll turn off our phones. Um, and that is so hard for me. It's so hard. Um, but thankfully, because my transaction coordinator or my mentor, I can somewhat do that and hand that off And so the time that I do have with my kids, I'm trying to be better about being intentional with the time, the quality of time that I have, because it's limited. I think that that's the thing. Um, I, I don't know that there's like balance, quote unquote balance. I don't know that that it really exists, especially for people like us who have to be very responsive to the market and to our clients. Um, but I think that like your instinct is right on. We're making the most of the time that we do have with our kids and being super present. And it's something that I'm still trying to learn too. So it makes me feel better that like, (laughs) that it's a journey and it's a process and that you have to continue learning with that, especially as your kids grow and their needs change. Yeah. And the other thing I would say to that is learning that it's okay if you need help. That's, Mm -hmm. that was really hard for me up until about two years ago. Um, I'm not good at asking for help, never have been. Um, And so I've had to get better at that. So we now um, we have help at like home. So we also live really close to family, which is like a game changer. My mom and dad help a ton my um, husband's younger sister lives with us. So she helps us with the kids when they're not at school or at camp. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's huge. Like, I don't know how I would do it without them. And then also we have help around the house. Actually, my little mother's helper is here right now. And she helps with laundry and helps with like getting things in the crock pot. Um, 
And that was really hard for me to be like, I need help. Cause then I was like, I'm a horrible housewife. Like I'm, you know, and then I'd feel guilty about that. But then I was like, no, like, yeah, I get to spend more time with my kids when I have help. And that's something I had to learn. That is one of the most common challenges that I've had that I've encountered with the, the mom agents that I work with. And, um, I don't know why it's so scary to admit that, Yeah, you know, that when we need help and, and it's, it's almost like the hard part is admitting that we need help and then taking the steps to find somebody to help you. And then it's even harder to broadcast it because for me, we, after we had Grady, uh, my son is 14 months old. And when I had him, it was like, everything changed for me. Like I thought it was all going to be like, all about work. I knew I was going to bring a nanny like day one, like that was what I was going to do. And I was going to keep after my goals. And then suddenly I'm looking at this little baby and I'm like, nothing else matters. I will, I will burn down the business I've built brick by brick. If I could just have more time with my baby and then like, you know, time goes on and you become yourself again, you like get back to like some sort of like center. And we, we ended up, we've had, um, help like childcare, full-time childcare in home through like, um, nannies and babysitters off and on through most of his life since he was like five or six months old. And it is such a game changer. Like when we have somebody here who's helping doing his laundry or clean or just vacuuming and sweeping, like you don't have to worry and it changes your mood too, so that you can actually, like you say, enjoy that time with your kids. It makes such a difference. Yeah. Huge. And I realized that that was more important for a mommy to be happy and want to be with them rather than having to focus on the things around the house and like get rid of my pride of this isn't about me. This is about my children and them being happy and them having their mommy when they can. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's so powerful. This isn't about me. It's about my children and letting them have that time with you. And yeah. oh my gosh, that's amazing. I want to like print that out. More than me cleaning the house. You know what I mean? Like they'll remember yeah. me more than just a housewife. They'll remember me as like, you know, engaging with their emotions and caring about what's going on in their world. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure that's going to make all the difference. Um, oh my gosh. How crazy. Well, I, I just love this conversation with you. And I, I, I love hearing about like where you've been, where you're going, what is your big hope for the next 12 months? Like if you have a, a really, you know, if you have a magic wand and you want to be at a different place in the next 12 months from now, what are those pieces that you're going after to, to get you to the next level, whether it's emotionally or financially or, business-minded? Yeah. So the next level is actually getting more help. (laughs) Yeah. Coming back to that, Uh um, because with help, I feel like we can leverage our strengths and, um, work more on income producing activities, um, and, you know, pay somebody to do the things that are not income producing that just take up our time. Uh, And so one thing that we are working on too are more systems and processes um, for the back end of when a lead comes in or how we're closing things out. Um, Thankfully, we've got our transaction coordinator. She's she's just amazing and she does a really good job on that. But uh, yeah, just having more systems and processes in place and then hiring some more help so that we can leverage our time and um, and we do want to have more time with the kids. It's not enough right now. And it is temporary and we know it's just a season, but the season can't keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And each year is more fleeting than the last. I feel like, yeah, my eldest, he'll be 11, um, this year. And so it's like, I only have seven more years. Like that's insane. Like these first 11 years went by so quickly. Um, and And then how, how old is your youngest? He's uh, five and five and a half. So we had four okay. and five years. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> don't We're, know if I, I read again, like ready, set, aim. Here we go. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> but now we're done. We're done. We're so done. Um, oh. And we're so blessed. So, so blessed. You certainly are. Is, is there any way that I can help you um, just while we have this time together, just as you are beginning to plan for these next things that you're working on or anything that I can support you with today? So I need to do more of your modules. (laughs) (laughs) 
I, I do them, but very slowly uh -huh. um, because it turns out to be like literally midnight that I'm like, can have time. Like I'm not even exaggerating uh, to go on there and then I'm exhausted and then I don't do it. And so that's where my executive assistant, I think is going to come into play and I can actually have her watch some of the stuff that you're teaching and doing um, because I know how to do it. I just need to implement it and I'm not. Um, so yeah. you're already putting it out there. I just need to follow through is what I'm trying to say. Well, that's actually a really good point because that is something that um, an executive assistant can do. And actually having a, a lot of times, like my first thing is saying like, you have to have the systems in place before you make that next hire um, yeah. in a perfect world, but you are probably an exception to that rule. And I think that it would make sense if you find someone who's well qualified and who has the right um, mindset and attitude, you bring them in and you work on implementing those systems with them. And they can do a lot of that back end infrastructure for you. And what's great is they understand it so well at that point. So as you continue expanding your team, they are training and hiring, like helping you with the hiring process as you bring more people on. Because like Bethany, you might be at a place at some point where you need more than one EA right. and you might need like some additional assistance. Um, just in terms of having the right support, like you might need a wow coordinator or you might need, you know, some like extra help. And that executive assistant, if you give them a hand in helping you build that infrastructure, the training and delegating at that point just becomes that much more easy. Yeah, for sure. We were listening to your podcast. I think it was last week where you're interviewing in a, an executive assistant and how she did that for somebody. Cause I, I kept thinking I had to have it all figured out and done um, and then when I listened to that, I was like, you know what? No, like if you're hiring the right person, they can help you do this. Um, and that was really eye opening. My husband and I listened to that together. Yeah. You could even reach out to her too, when you're ready. And she's, she's doing yeah. coaching between, um, between like the agent and assistant. And she's doing that for me and my assistant right now, which has been oh, really awesome. helpful. Yeah, yeah. But we've, we've had other agents come through in the market authority Academy and it's like, all the systems are there. So a big part of that implementation is just bringing in their people to help put it in place for them. And I'm like, that's cool. Whatever <laughs> you do what you need to do. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's journey is different. Yeah. Um, and this is our story and we're running with it. I love it. <laughs> Well, I, for one, am having a blast following along on this journey. Um, and so for those who would like to keep in touch with you and just kind of like watch from afar as well, how can they get in touch with you? Where can they find you on social? Uh, yeah. So Instagram is mainly what I do. Um, so Bethany McKay Realtor is my handle. Um, and that's where they can kind of get to know my personality. I really do try to just show our everyday life and just be really real on there. And so I feel like when people see me on there, they get to know us really well. I love it. Okay. I'll definitely link to it in the show notes as well. So um, guys, if you're listening, check out the show notes, you can see a little bit more about Bethany and connect with her a little further because um, you a have such an amazing positive personality and any conversation with you is always fun and I think that you have such a spirit of giving back to the community um and really helping support others in pursuit of their dreams too and I just love that about you thank you so much for having me I really appreciate it it's an honor it's crazy like I don't I didn't meet you that long ago and everything that I've learned and people act, like it's just I love Instagram I love I know it people like this it's it's amazing people think I'm crazy but I'm like no like I meet the best people you really do you really do and and I'm super happy that our paths crossed too it's been it's been a lot of fun and I can't wait to see where where time takes you and and where that next level is so maybe we'll have to do a round two in in a little while sounds good girl thank you okay. so much thanks